production. This is where our, organ, like our, our industry falls one, down in what, recruitment and induction. So the induction was like we all joked about it before. You turn up, you do, you know, you're just on reception and you, get, you throw them the keys pretty much on their first day and say, look after the place. Okay, induction needs to be very, very heavy. And it's their career. They're starting a career. So I've, um, I wrote a book, Changing Lives. Again, another, in, this is actually, I don't know if what type of motivation this is, but I wrote this book so I could just give it to the person and before they start, they would have read the full book. So they have full training beforehand. You know, and then they come in, they got an idea of what they're meant to be doing. I wrote it so I didn't have to train them the first day. <laughs> so I don't know what type of motivation, that might just be laziness, but you know, you do things like that. You write manuals, you write books. I wrote the book, that was a primary reason why I wrote it for, because I was sick of trying new stuff on new stuff. So I said, you, write, you read the book and then you start up. You know, what else could you guys do? Could you make a video? Could you make tape recordings? Could you make, um, could you write a manual? For the, for the new stuff for their induction period. You know, you can do a million things. Have a clear process, make them feel comfortable, give them the tools. You can probably not see this very well, but this is what a salesperson would go through when they first start up with me in the first five weeks. They would complete the induction program of a new member. So what they would do is they'd do an orientation session, a supervised workout, a nutrition appointment, a maximum results personal training session, and a program review with the trainers. So they, now they know what to sell. And that's very important. So if you've got a staff member telling you about something they think rather than something they've experienced, the difference is feelings. And what do people buy? Feelings or the products? Feelings. So why are we training them on products? Right? The best example, I got someone to stand up and um, give an explanation of when they went skydiving. I've never been skydiving. But they stood up and they said, you know, I, so if I gave you an explanation of skydiving, it's like you jump out of the plane, you get a bit nervous, you jump out, it's probably the best experience of your life, seeing the whole city and everything like that. Their experience was when they're at the plane, they jumped out. The raindrops were so thick on their face, it was burning their face. Now, that's not something you learn in a textbook. That's not something you hear on a video or a movie or anything. That's something you feel, an experience. So your guys need to go through and experience what a person's feeling and even try some classes that are in there. Um, you know, I get them to try a body balance class or a pump class. That way they don't say, oh, yeah, it's just a class with a barbell. It's like, oh, man, you're going to be feeling so sore the next day, but that's okay because, you know, they tell them about feelings and people buy feelings. So just make sure any of your team, your whole team should go through this process where they're learning and actually physically not just reading about body pump, but they're doing it or whatever classes you have. Um, they've got to do an aqua class if you've got that. They've got to learn how to work on reception. They've got to understand how it is for other people in this situation because that way they don't have split between departments. You know, the sales team don't think the receptionists are just, you know, over there and the personal trainers are over there. Let them spend a day on reception just so they know what it's like. Oh, gee, man, I didn't realise how busy it was between 9 and 9.30 checking in 60 people for classes. It's flat out. And guess what? Your salespeople then at 9 o'clock, if they don't have an appointment, might just jump up and help a receptionist swipe through those people. Okay because that they've experienced it. Um, rather than you ask the salesperson, can you just jump on the reception? No, what do I have to do that for, you know? It's, it, they'll want to do it. They'll do it without you asking. Um, you know, go and visit the creche and meet the team. Get them to spend an hour in the creche with your childcare. That'll be enough for them to stay in sales another year and realise how good the job is, right? <laughs> what a great thing to do. Um, learn the telephone script by heart. Learn the guest register. Be comfortable giving a tour know how to do the two option close, know how to do the paperwork. So whatever your minimum criteria are, you just write them all down and then through the five weeks of their induction, they get it all signed off by either another team member or, a, or the man, manager. But I think it's crucial that salespeople and receptionists exercise in the centre ten times in their first five weeks. Two times a week, that's it. That's it. They have to exercise twice a week. I don't care if they come in stretch and then start their job. But they've got to be a passionate believer of what we do. Because how can I stand here and you know, convince you to exercise if I know I don't do it myself? It's, you know, it's, 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 it's hard. They've got to know cancellation procedures and stuff. Just whatever it is, just make a list and then just work your way through it. And then at the end, maybe you give them a certificate or a you know, dinner voucher or something that they've got through your five-week induction program. But these sort of things make sure that people don't leave two days later because they go, wow, these people are going to train and invest in me. Um, go for it. Um, actually, I w if someone said that to me, I'd say, oh, okay, um, wrong person for the job, straight away. Because you should have staff going, wow, I get a free membership when I come here? You know, like, that's what you should have. Like, I'd just take them away and say, really, do you want to be here? Seriously. 
It's one of those questions that I'll just straight away say, you sure you want to be in this industry? Because it should be the other way around where they're so excited that they get a free membership and they can exercise. So, yeah, that is, that's going back to attitude. Great question. That has happened to me a million times. And you just got to have a bit of, you know, confidence about it and what you do and really stand up for who you are and what you do. And this is building a team of superstars, not just having a team of whoever you've got all put together, all sorts, you know. That's how you build a team of superstars. Just pull them aside. You might find they get a quick adjustment really quick. They go, oh, no, it's okay, you know. Something is funny. When you take something away from somebody, they want it more. So you just got to believe in it. The other thing about management, too, is that never let something go unnoticed. You know, so if someone's doing something, David's doing something, and I walk past and go, oh, he's, he's reading a magazine at reception again. Oh, God, I'm not going to ask him again. The moment I walk past and he knows that I've seen that, guess what? Behaviour is acceptable because she's seen it. means it's okay. So pull up everything. So if they said that to me, I'd pull that them up straight away about that. That's, that's probably the biggest thing in management I can possibly share with you is that I know it's nitpicking with everybody. If they're late, five minutes, whatever. Pull up, different if they're selling 180 memberships a month, whatever. <laughs> Just pull aside and just say, we have a, we have a, you know, a flexible um, system for the sales team or whatever. But if it's a receptionist late and there's members waiting, not acceptable. You know, and just bring it up straight away. If they're reading a magazine on the front desk, not acceptable. The moment they do that once and they've seen that you notice them, they'll do it again. You just like allowed that behavior. 